Here you just do it beforehand so that when you get your bounds, it's in terms of you, so you don't have to do this step. You just go directly from here. It's basically, do you want to do the work beforehand or do you want to do the work after? doesn't matter, you're going to do the work either way. So it's really up to you. Now I'm going to make you learn both. I'm going to tell you what to do, but it's an option for you. You got it? Okay. So we'll say if x equals 2 and if x equals 0, this is the whole process of changing balance. If x equals 2, then u equals 2 squared minus 1, then u equals 2 squared minus 1. See where the 2 is coming from, right? Mm -hmm. And u is going to equal what? 3. Three. Okay. If x equals 0, u equals 0 squared minus 1. Very good. Well, now we can make a substitution with everything, and the bounds will match the, the, uh, the variable, which is nice. So let's do it. Do we still have the 4x? Of course. Do we still have x squared minus 1? Of course not. That was our u. Notice how it's going to look exactly the same as the previous problem. du over 2x. The only thing that's going to be different is what? What is the What does 0 become? What did the 2 become? It's going to be done the same way. 2 is gone. x is gone. So negative 1 to 3 will still pull the 2 outside. u to the third du. Hey, we even do the integral the same way. We're going to get 2. u to the fourth over 4. And we'll simplify that. u to the fourth over 2. But now when I do my evaluation, do I have to substitute back in for the u? Mm -hmm. No, because we did our bounds. And that's the only reason why we had to here, because the bounds were in terms of x. Here you've already changed them. You've taken x's and you made u's out of them. Once you make u's out of them, you can use it right here. Get it? <laughs> uh, you can use it here. <laughs> Negative 1 to 3. Because those are in terms of u. Plug them in, you're going to get the same answer. So let's try that. Hopefully you get the same answer. It makes it so your evaluation is just a little bit simpler, by the way, because you typically, typically, because you have uh, this function's gone right now, that you don't have to plug that in and then don't do all the math. Basically, you just do it ahead of time. You're still doing it, though. You're still doing it. It just kind of set aside for you up here, which is, I suppose, nice. Minus. Negative 1 to the 4th over 2. Well, what that's going to be is 81 over 2 minus 1 half. And again, that's 40. Show of hands, how many people feel okay about the both methods? How many people prefer method 1? Method 1. Okay, that's cool. You can. It's, it's fine. How many people prefer method 2? People seem to, to like that a little bit better for some reason. Uh, simply because you're doing the work ahead of time, you don't have to worry about this later on. The two mistakes I see are, are, are this. Uh, I see, because people, integration is not that bad. I see people making mistakes here. They either forget to substitute back in x here, or they accidentally do it here again, and they get something way off. You see what I'm saying? That's where the mistakes happen. So do one or the other. Now, of course, on a test, I will ask you for both. Maybe not even that one. I'll say do this if you want. But I'll give you some where you have to change bounds. I say I want to see you changing bounds. So you do need to learn that method. Either way. So for those intermediate steps, though, would you have to use a different notation in method one? Since, like, where it says 2, that integral of uq between 0 and 2, that's not actually true, right? But this is slightly off. Right. So yeah. how would you actually write that if you were? You'd still write it. Oh, okay. You'd lie. <laughs> Yeah, you're still right. Uh, but that's, this is one of the reasons why we have that. Because you go, oh, 
these bounds don't really match up with that letter. Now, you could say, well, maybe we'll just treat like a dummy variable. It's really not because it's substitution. But we're, we know in our head that we're just going to plug back in for x. So it still works. But you, I mean, those really don't match up all that well. Because they, actually at all, they're x's and that's a u. Good question. Any other questions before we go on? So then as a method of checking, if you actually want to do both methods and you should. It has to be the same thing. It is the same thing. You're just doing one part here, and you're doing one part here. One part before evaluation, before even integral, and another part after the integral, during evaluation. That's really it. You're doing the same work. Same work. Just two different places. Good questions. Any other questions before we go on? Why does that work when you change the range of the bounds? Why does it work? Yeah. Well, it's taking a function and making it something else, uh, basically translating into a different variable. Yeah. And then, and then you have to change your x variable into your u variable to make it work. Oh, okay. okay. So right now this is 0 and 2, but it's regarding the x function. This is negative 1 to 3, but it's regarding the u function that you just created. Does that mean that the integral that we're translating into is within that family of that why it comes out to be in the same area? Well, that's a good question. Um, you're completely changing the function when you do this. Right. You really are. Uh, and so you're just making, it, it's almost magical that it works. Kind of cool. But it's, you're making a different function and saying the areas will be the same because I'm working with different bounds in that function. If you try to do it graphically, I, mean, I have a hard time believing that 2u two, two cubed is going to look anything like uh, 4x x squared minus 1 to the third. In fact, I know that because a cubic is, just goes like this. right? Uh, 4x x squared minus 1 to the third does what well, we saw. It. I showed you the graph. It doesn't look the same. So you're changing functions, but you're only talking about the areas. So basically you're saying the area here between these bounds is the same as the area here between these bounds. It's kind of like doing a ratio. I suppose, perhaps, but it's a direct rate. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's equal. Maybe proportion would be a better okay. way to make an analogy there. Um, but some, something similar to that idea. It's kind of, it's very cool. Now you need to know that substitution doesn't always work, right? So you can't always do this. It's only very special cases. I can give you lots of integrals where you can't use a substitution. In fact, most you can't use a substitution with. That's special. Well, Every one that you can do a substitution with, the derivative has to be in there somewhere, right? It's got to work that way. Are we going to deal with the integrals beyond that we can't use substitution for? Not in this class. That's next semester. In your next semester, which I'll be teaching in uh, next semester. fall, no, spring, spring of 013, <laughs> a year from now, a year from now, so just go ahead and fail uh, this class or something, take it next semester, pass it with some other teacher, and then come and see me. Four B and four C or just four B? Just four B for now. You need to skip up to four C. No. <laughs> that my videos won't be in order. See, <laughs> that wouldn't work. They're going to be in order. All right, what do you say we practice a couple more? Would you like that? Yes. Think you know. Some of you always complain, I give you stuff that's too easy in class and it doesn't look like your homework. Well, here, deal with that then. Huh? Actually, it kind of does look like your homework most of the time, I would say. Some of them are harder. Would you not say? I would say. I think so for the most part. Anyway, that's fairly difficult. Looks like something that would throw some people for a loop. Let's talk about it. Uh, firstly, can, is it a fit your integration table directly just like that? Oh, not at all. So it's going to probably involve a substitution. If we can do it, it will involve a substitution. <coughs> Watch and think through. Don't say it out loud. Just think about what a proper substitution would be in this case. Think. Don't say it out loud. Some of you might be asking, well, could it be 2x? Could it be 2x? 
If it was 2x, it'd be sine of u to the fifth times cosine of u. Sine of u to the fifth times cosine of u does not fall in your integration table. So that doesn't really help you at all. Sine x and then change it to parentheses to the fifth power. Okay, and let me change it. get to your cosine. Let me see if I know what you're saying. You're saying that if I change it to this, Change it like that? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. Why is she changing to that? What do you think? It really is easier to see, isn't it? Uh, your u should not be 2x. Not 2x. That's not going to work for you. I know I said it's supposed to be the inside thing. This is an inside thing. However, if you take the 2x, the derivative of 2x is only 2. That's just a constant. It's not going to eliminate the cosine. It's not going to eliminate the sine. You're still going to have sine and cosine. That would be a bad choice. But you'd see that bad choice within like a minute, right? At least I would hope so, because you go through the process, you go, wait a second, eh, something's not right here, Mr. Lando. I gotta change this thing. And then you change it. Then you look back at your integral and say, well, do I pick sine of 2x or cosine of 2x? Because that's the only other thing I'm gonna do. I'm definitely not going to pick to the fifth power. Hmm? Fifth power, you'd have a, you know, you'd have some sort of a chain, chain rule or general power rule if you want. That's gonna make things a little messy. Because you're gonna have sine, then cosine. It's not going to simplify out for you very nicely. You typically pick the inside of something without the power. So we're going to pick sine of 2x. Now, you got to kind of remember how to take derivatives of sine of 2x, because a lot of people here forget one thing about this. Do you see that sine of 2x is actually a negative? No, it's not a negative. It's a chain rule. It's a chain rule. Oh, it's a chain rule. It's a chain rule or whatever. Du equals, here's how you do a chain rule. How do you do a chain rule? Uh, you flip and take your sine and flip the cosine of 2x, multiply it by dd of x of 2x. Okay, cosine 2x, absolutely. But then the derivative of the inside must also be there. You see, when people do this, a lot of times they're off by a factor of two. Actually, a factor of one half, because when you divide it's one half. But they're off by that. They're off by a factor of two. Because they forget all about the two. Do you see the two? Don't lose the two. Okay, so we're going to have du equals cosine 2x times 2 dx. Otherwise, I'd probably write it as 2 yeah. cosine 2x dx. That's the appropriate way to write that. Just don't lose the 2. It's a chain rule. You've got to have the derivative of 2x somewhere. The derivative of 2x is the 2. Move it out in front of your cosine. So what we're going to get is du. Once we solve for dx, it's going to be kind of obvious that we pick the right choice. And here's where you'd make that judgment. By the way, you're getting more practice on... Uh, substitution right now too, right? It's kind of nice. Do you see anything that's going to cross out? That's where you make your, your judgment. You go, okay, if this becomes a U, I'm good to go. If this gets crossed out, that's fantastic, and I'll be left with no more X's, and that's exactly what we want. You feel okay with this so far? Now, at this point, we're also going to change our bounds. We're going to change our bounds. Because I don't know about you, but I'd rather deal with the